Welcome to Guiding Light Assembly, Abuja Worship Center. Here we build leaders who change the world. Our super celebration service holds every Sunday by 9 a.m. at Mulberry Event Center behind NTA Star Times, Area 11, Garki, Abuja. Our midweek mountain services holds every Wednesday by 5.30 p.m. at Mulberry Event Center, Area 11, Garki. We are all encouraged to be in attendance and also invite a friend. We started out this month by saying that not all churchcomers are believers and that it takes personal faith in Christ Jesus to become a believer. We also said that not all believers are sons of God. A believer becomes a son of God when such a believer accepts daily to be led by the Holy Spirit. We mentioned that whereas every believer is guaranteed a place in heaven, not every believer can live victoriously here on the earth. It takes sons of God to live victoriously here on earth. I want you to remember that this month we are considering the awesomeness of living victoriously as sons of God, which is the message of Easter. It is the message of the season. Jesus didn't die so that we can just simply do church and call our name ourselves names, Christians. No, it's much more than that. He died so that daily he will see us overcome. He will see us live victoriously, you know, triumphing over the things that other people can because we are accessible. Uh, We made ourselves accessible to the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity by whom we are to reign here upon the face of the earth. And when we do that, we create tremendous joy in heaven and particularly in the heart of Jesus, a sense of fulfillment that he died and rose again, not for free. Hello, that it's for a purpose so that you and I can live victorious lives here on the earth. Hallelujah. We said finally that when the life of a believer is led by the Holy Spirit, that life is marked by certain specific identifiable characteristics, the presence of which are clearly unmistakable. Such specific identifiable characteristics we mentioned include humility. Who remembers the next? Patience, sacrifice, and what? Forgiveness. Last Sunday we dealt with patience, so this morning we shall deal with sacrifice. It's appropriate. Hallelujah. We shall deal with what? Sacrifice. That's why we've, we've themed this service victory by sacrifice. This morning I want you to take your mind of sacrifice as that which you give to God. Please take your mind of sacrifice as that which you give to God. Place your mind on the principle of sacrificing. Sacrifice as an act of giving up something for the benefit of another just for the sake of pleasing God. Am I making sense to you? Sacrifice, it's that we are talking about this morning. It's not the item or the thing that is sacrificed to God. We are talking about the act of sacrifice, the, 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 the lifestyle whereby you give up something for the benefit of another just to please God. You give up something. For the sake of another, for the blessing of another, for the increase of another, just to please God. Now, once your mind is so sad, we are on track, giving up things for the benefit of others, for the sake of pleasing God, is what the Holy Spirit always leads us to do as sons of God. It is in this sense that the Hebrew word for sacrifice becomes very relevant. The word is zivak. Zivak. It means to slaughter. It means to kill. Zivak is not talking about what you slaughtered. 
but the act of slaughtering or killing something at your expense for the benefit of another just to please God. Now listen to me, child of God. Some of the things the sons of God sacrifice for the benefit of others include their rights. Someone say my right. Mm. Mm. It includes my comfort. Someone say my comfort. Talk to me now. It includes my convenience. Someone say my convenience. It includes my opportunities, my wealth, and even my very life. Hallelujah. First, I need you to see that this is so and so true because it was modeled for us by our elder brother, the only begotten son of God, Jesus Christ. In Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8, we hear a conversation there between father and son. This is how it went. Also, as I now reported, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go first? That's the father. He is reporting that the father is asking, who shall I send? Who shall go first? Why, why is the father asking that question? Because he looked down upon the world he has created and everything has gone messy. And, and he understood that except there is a shedding of blood. There will be no way out for these people. And so he looked around and it was, you know, in the palace in heaven. And the company of all the angels, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit seated on the throne. When he asked the question, the Father asked him, who shall I send? Who shall go for us? Without hesitation. Someone lifted up his hand. That was the son of God. It was not the Holy Spirit. It was not any other angel. It was who? The son. You see, he was modeling for us that sons must be willing to sacrifice. Sons must be willing to sacrifice. So when he lifted up his hands, he answered and said, here I am. Or oh, here am I. Send me. He offered himself. Hello. He what? Offered himself. Apostle Paul, whom I believe wrote the book of the Hebrews, <coughs> picked up this and Related it in Hebrews 9.26, telling us, For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, had he appeared to put away sin. How? By the sacrifice of himself. Question, who led him to do this type of sacrifice? Child of God, I say to you. The Holy Spirit. Three of them seated on the throne. The father asked the question. The Holy Spirit nudged him. And he submitted himself to the Holy Spirit. To say, I'm the son here. I will take the bullet. I'm the son here. I will take the bullet. So he came. He was led by the Holy Spirit. I want you to understand this, beloved. Sons, not just believers. Sons, not just believers, are the ones that willingly give up for others to go up. Sons, not just believers, are the ones who always will be willing to give up for others to go up. I have wondered why evangelism is a big struggle with many believers today in the church. Hello? The reason is simple. They can't give up their egos. But for time, 
I had actually intended to make this bit interactive. Because here there will be many reasons. But the truth and the underlying reason is many of us don't get engaged in evangelism because we don't want to give up on our egos. We can't give up our egos. We are believers. But we are not sons. Sons will give up on their egos. What do you mean? How can I bring down myself to talk to someone that I don't even know? What if they shun me? What if they talk to me recklessly? You see, you're considering you are not considering the importance of what, it, what is at stake. What is at stake is the soul of a man or a woman. And the interest of the one that has the soul. This is an eternal dimension of life that we don't often think about. You know, I, 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 I thought about it this morning. Really, in the local assembly, there shall be no department called evangelism department. Honestly. There should be no department called prayer department, assessing department. Because prayer and evangelism are the responsibilities of every believer. So when we create a department and say this is intercessory to this event, we are saying that only some people should do it. No, it's for every believer. But you know, we also know that not every believer is a son. So only sons will volunteer to serve. Only sons will volunteer. I mean, believers are very busy. Believers are very busy people. And I was just thinking about it this morning. Ah, and I said, Jesus, if you had been so very, so, so very busy in heaven. When the question was asked, whom shall I send? Who shall go for us? He said, Father, you know, I would have loved to. And I really love to. But you know, I'm very busy. <laughs> ah, there will have been no way for you and I. No way. But we are very busy. We are believers, not sons. Are you still with me here? What is at stake is of eternal significance to that soul and to the owner of the soul, God. Let's take a brief look at some of the things that sons willingly sacrifice for the benefit of others just to please God. Number one, I talked about rights. Hello? Sons will always give up their rights for the benefit of others. It is the right of sons to be served in their father's house, but true sons serve and not wait to be served. Luke chapter 22, verse 27. The Bible says, The Lord, as the only begotten Son of God, He declares, Who is more important? The one sitting at the table or the one serving? You think the one at the table is more important. But he says, I am like a servant among you. I am like who? A servant among you. Little wonder that Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 5 verse 13 could say to us, For brethren, ye have been called into liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. But what? By love. What do we do? Praise God. I here stand to say that you are a son. If you can give up your rights for the benefit of another sense and for the benefit of others in service. Amen. Number two, comfort. Sons give up their comforts to secure the comfort of others. Sons give up their comforts to secure the comfort of others. First Peter. In 1 Peter chapter 2, 24. The Bible says of Jesus. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sins. Should live what? Unto righteousness. By whose tribes we were healed. I don't know whether you are getting the point I am making. He took our 
took sicknesses upon himself and gave the comfort of his health to us. Why? Because he's a son. He modeled it for us. Hello? In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 21, the Bible says, For he had made him to be seen for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. Child of God, you are a son if you can give up your comfort just to secure the comfort of another. Convenience. Sons will willingly give up their convenience just to secure the convenience of others. Hebrews 2, 14 to 15. In Hebrews 2, 14 to 15, the Bible says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Are you a son of God? If you can give up your confidence just to secure the confidence of another, you are. Praise God. Wealth. <laughs> I could stay here for the rest of the day, but I don't have time. So I decided this morning that it's Easter Sunday. I'm not going to take your time. Sons will always give up their wealth to make others wealthy. Sons. They understand the principle of wealth. When one is wealthy and all others are poor, that wealthy man is a poor man. When a wealthy man makes himself poor, just to make others wealthy, he is profoundly wealthy. That's what Jesus did. Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. It says, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, what happened? Yet for my sake he became poor, that I, through his poverty, might be rich. That's the principle. You are a son if you can give up your wealth just to secure the wealth of others. Even the very life. Sons are willing to give up even their very life when the need arises. Sons will give up their lives to secure the lives of others. Why in America, not in this country, we don't really appreciate them. The service people so important to them in America. They treat them with special care. I'm not talking about government now. I'm talking about the people. When you see service people come into any place, you're lining up to get into the aircraft at the airport, and they come, they give them preference. Because these are people who are willing to put their lives down to save our lives. They understood the concept. That life by itself without more, is a failure. And that just as the corn of wheat standing by itself is of no use, except it falls down and dies. So, any life by itself is of no consequence. So, people understanding that willingly will lay down their lives just to secure the lives of others. Are you still with me here? It's very quiet here this morning. Matthew chapter 20, 22. The Lord says, do as I did. Tell your neighbor, do as he did. You are not talking that. Do as you d he did. He said, do as I did. The son of man did not come for people to serve him. He came to serve others and to give his life to save many people. Let's do likewise. 
You are a son if you can give up your life just to secure the life of others. And it comes with huge rewards. And these rewards are what we call victories in life that bring tremendous blessing to God's heart. Pride to the heart of Jesus who had modeled it for us. I found out in scripture that whenever it is time for God to reward people, God does not call all believers. Hello? Wow. You know, we all have one reward as believers, heaven. After that one, if you want reward here upon the face of the earth, you're going to earn it. Hello? Hello? And one way you do that is by sacrifice. Psalm 50 verse 5. What did it say? Read with me. Gather my sins together unto me. Wait! Don't rush scripture. Did you not see semicolon there? What happened? Why semicolon? God was talking. Who went and put semicolon in his mouth? He realized that the instruction he was giving, because the people that we gather are the angels. It's in the New Testament. He knew that if he had just left it that way, they would go and bring every believer, every saint. A saint is not the one that the Pope had declared a saint to. It's the one that had received Jesus, and Jesus' blood had washed them of their sin. That's the saint, and we are many. Do you understand what I'm saying? And God knows that he has washed many people and they are just in the church, useless to him. So it's time for reward. He gave the instruction. Gather my sins together unto me. Hey, hey, hey. Before you go and gather everybody, read with me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So you sit down and you do not live the life of sacrifice. Sorry. Upon the face of the earth here, no reward. Your life is one of disappointment to God. And this is the, the, the entire message of this season. Jesus modeled it. And he lived victorious. He lived what? Victorious. So that we too can live this life and live victoriously upon the face of the earth. That when the father looks down, he will see sons and daughters that are triumphant. Sons and daughters that the enemy cannot put down. Sons and daughters that the enemy knows to stay away from. Because they will hold back nothing when it comes to the matters that are important to God's heart. And therefore, God will hold back nothing when it affects them. I give you a few examples in the few minutes I have. And that is the authority and power of resurrection. Hello. It is the authority and what power of resurrection. Now, the reward for Abraham as an example, first example. When Abraham sacrificed Isaac, in his walk with God. Hello. To further his relationship with God. In response, what did God do? Genesis chapter 22, 15 to, 20, 15 to 18. Read with me. By myself, I have sworn, say the Lord, my God. You see, no, God does not, it's not frivolous just to get up and swear like that. No, 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 no. This thing entered him. So he said, by myself. Because he looked for, what can I swear with? Nothing bigger, nothing greater. So he said, by myself, I have sworn, said the Lord. For because thou hast what? Done this thing. The most, hey, many people are deceiving us with the message of grace. That is a doing that's why you have been given the grace. You receive the grace to do. To do. You receive the grace for what? To do. Bring the scripture back now. Have I finished? He said, by myself. I have I sworn. See yet the Lord for. Because thou hast done this thing. What thing? He sacrificed Isaac. 
and has not withheld thy son, thine only son. Move with me now. That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because thou hast obeyed my voice. I, I will say here. No group of people. Google it. In the history of this world. No group. Has lived here on earth as victoriously as the Jews. Why? By reason of the sacrifice made by their biological father, Abraham. That's how it rolls. The reward for our Lord Jesus. Hello. Apostle Paul revealing the case of the sacrifice of Jesus and his reward here on earth. In Philippians chapter 2, 6 to 11 says, read with me, who being in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man, Jesus, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became what? Obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross. Sacrifice. Because of that, wherefore, God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of things in heaven and of things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's why at the mention of the name of Jesus, demons know to tremble. That is why at the mention of the name of Jesus, by faith, sicknesses bow, all kinds of things that are contradictory to the plan and intentions of God will bow at that name. Everything has been made to obey that name because he sacrificed himself. He sacrificed himself. Are we still together here? What he willingly gave up in sacrifice, that's the beauty. He, in, he secured in eternity for himself by resurrection. Finally, the reward of glory. Now, that's where you and I come in. As believers, when we follow on to become sons and live the life of sacrifice, something happens. Hello? Tell anybody something happens. What happens? We are made to join the order of Christ. That is the Rosicrucian order. Have you heard about it before? Yeah, things happen there. Hello? And I, I hear they are in two dimensions. There is the reformed, there is the unreformed. Things happen there. Now, these are power bases. Hello? That is also the order of Christ. The order of what? It's not every believer that belongs there. Only sons are initiated in there. Sons that have sacrificed. Sons that live the life of sacrifice. Am I still talking here? Don't worry, I'm about to finish. <laughs> here I'm a child of God. When we become sons by living the life of sacrifice, we join the order of the only begotten son of God. It's the order of Christ. Our reward is that Jesus Christ brings us unto glory and become his brothers. He brings us unto glory and he calls us brothers because now we are all sons of God. I'm not the one saying this. It's in our Bible. Where in Hebrews chapter 2, 10 to 11, the Bible says, read it with me. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things. In bringing, how many believers? <laughs> in bringing many sons unto glory 
to make the captain of their salvation perfect through how? For both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one, one, the other. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. As sons and members of the order of Christ. What does the glory he brings us on to do for us? What does he do for us? This is the power of the season. This is why this season is key. Listen. It avails us of resurrection authority and power. This is what he was passing on to us. When in Luke chapter 2, 36, uh, 20, 36, he says, Neither can they die anymore. Tell your neighbor, you, if you are a son, you die no more. And don't forget, I said that this son, this word son, is not gender sensitive. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Neither can they die anymore, for they are equal unto what? Angels. And are children of God, being the children of the resurrection. Please hear me. The children of the resurrection have been given the authority and power, one, to do the same works that Jesus did and even greater works. Why? Because he has gone to be with the Father. Number two, to ask the father for anything in the name of Jesus. And the father will do it. He has no choice. So that the son may be what? Glorified in the father. Number three, to ask Jesus for anything in his own name. And he has no choice. He will do it. Where did we find that? It's there. When you go home, read John chapter 14, 12 to 14. That is the victory of the believer that allows himself or herself to be led by the Holy Spirit who had become some. This is what we call victory by sacrifice. For until you have sacrifice, you cannot enjoy resurrection. So you can cook the turkey, eat the turkey, dress the beautiful, no sacrifice, no resurrection. Are we still talking here? This is why Apostle Peter in 1 Peter 2.5 1 Peter 2.5 told us you also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer of what? Spiritual sacrifices acceptable unto God by Jesus Christ. Beloved, become a son. Help me preach to your neighbor. Become a son. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Sacrifice. Come on, I can't hear you. Sacrifice. And enjoy the life of victory. Rise on your feet. Rise on your feet. Let me quickly drop in your heart the prophetic word for the week. And we do a few things and go home. It's from one of the most revealing scriptures that they even gave to us this morning as a theme. Luke 24, 1 to 5. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and setting others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, Two men stood by them in shining garments and as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Help me announce to your neighbor, welcome neighbor, to your week of life. I welcome you to your week of life. You are 
God's lively stone. Consequently, death shall never again reign in your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hereby command rolled away every stone sealing death in any area of your life in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hear me, child of God. Everyone seeking for anything dead in your life shall return disappointed. That amen is not encouraging. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the power of resurrection. I hereby release life into every facet of your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every contention against the power of life in your life, I command cross this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every activity of death in your life, I decree foreclose right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every operation of death in your affairs, I command over rules. I command over rules. I command over rules. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And every move of death to hinder the works of your hands. I have a reverse. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I have I activate and call forth into life everything dead in your life that ought not to die have died in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's resurrection morning. Let resurrection become your portion on a day-to-day -day basis in the affairs of your life in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' much name we decree. Amen.